Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to the State House. This is a this is a great day. We're having a, a change of command here for the Department of Veterans Affairs. Uh, we are, are appreciate very much General Major General Will Grimsley's service for three years since the Department of Veterans Affairs was established as a cabinet agency. He's done a tremendous job, he and his team, and we're here to welcome Major General Todd McCaffrey uh, and his bride, Lisa. We're delighted to have you here, ma'am. Uh, just briefly, before they, they speak, I would remind everyone that this is a military state. We have eight military bases. We have a military tradition that goes all the way back. Uh, we are will soon be celebrating an, an anniversary of the Revolutionary War. And we have the Major General, the Commander of the State Guard here, Sheriff Leon Lott. And I remind people that out at the armory, the Olympia Armory, the historic Olympia Armory, where the State Guard meets their pictures, uh, fo some photographs and some drawings of all of, of those who, who led the militia. And the first, of course, was Francis Marion. Uh, Francis Marion and General Pickens and General Sumter were the main leaders of the revolutionary effort in South Carolina, which is successful. So we go back to the beginning in our military history. And our military tradition, our Judeo-Christian traditions converge here in a place that we call paradise, and it produces strong people. And we have strong people here today. I'm going to call on General Grimsley in a minute, but I would like to remind you of his career. He was 33 years. He served in the United States, in Germany, Korea, Kuwait, multiple tours in Iraq, deployments all over the place. His last tour was the Chief of Staff of the United States Strategic Command. Uh, among his medals are the Distinguished Service Medal, the Silver Star, multiple awards, Bronze Stars, Purple Heart for wounds received in combat, two master's degrees, a doctor of education, and his service here to our state. And we are confident that we will be utilizing your talents. Again, we're not going to say goodbye. Uh, General McCaffrey is likewise enormously qualified and talented. He's a retired U.S. Major General, over 34 years of service, culminating as Chief of Staff, the U.S. Africa Command. Uh, after his military retirement, he joined the University of South Carolina, where he was the Senior Director of Strategic Partnership for Governor, Government and Military Programs. His military career, he commanded all echelons through the division level, which uh, in the Army is somewhere between 10,000 and 25,000 soldiers, led both an infantry battalion and a striker brigade combat team in combat. He has served as the chief of staff to two four-star level commands as two four-star generals and as the deputy commander of the U.S. Army Pacific, where he supervised Army operations across the Pacific. He's a graduate of the United States Military Academy, holds a master's degree in economics from the Colorado School of Mines and in national studies from the U.S. Army War College. Uh, he has received the Army's Distinguished Service Medal, been awarded the Bronze Star multiple times for meritorious service in combat. He and his wife reside, Lisa, reside in Columbia and are proud parents of three adult children. So as I say, South Carolina's got talent. We could not have had more talented leaders of our Department of Military Affairs. And it, we, this gives us great confidence in what the future holds for our state. And I will remind the veterans out there, and we have about 400,000 veteran families in South Carolina with our, as I mentioned, eight military bases and the Coast Guard as well, that this the Veterans Affairs, Department of Veterans Affairs, is not only to see that the veterans understand the, uh, the services available to them through hospitals and other retirement um, avenues that the Army and the military have, but also to provide a, a link between their talent and that that is needed in positions and endeavors in our state. Our military, our veterans are trained, they're experienced, they're educated, and they provide enormous help and guidance in our workforce as well as in other uh, areas uh, in South Carolina. So they are most valuable 
among our very valuable citizens. General Grimsley. So three years ago, we began this journey to build a brand new department to fundamentally shift the focus of our efforts to create and sustain this environment where our service members, veterans, and their families could thrive and to do it in innovative, collaborative ways with partners who shared our passions. Together, we have achieved that and much more. Thanks to the governor, the lieutenant governor, my fellow cabinet officers, the General Assembly, your leadership and support of our work and your confidence in us to be very aggressive in taking a very, very different and innovative approach to make exponential leaps toward enabling our veterans to live at or exceed their given potential. With your enduring support and our many partners, this department is well on its way to be the standard in service to our tribe and the example that others throughout the nation are striving to emulate, quite frankly. People are taking notice of us and what we're doing. This has been and will remain challenging, demanding, and very, very purposeful work. And so it's now uh, time to hand that over, but it's not one I do so lightly because this has been uh, an incredibly important thing in my life and one to which I've been committed and I, quite frankly, will also remain committed. I've spent most of my adult life, professional life in service, and like many of you have done so by prioritizing time with, uh, toward, <laughs> toward work. But now it's time to place my family first, probably for the first time in, in my life as well, and to ensure that I don't miss all those ball games, birthdays, school events, and other things with my grandsons that I missed with our sons. So many of you recognize, but may not have experienced what military families do in the course of lives. Jan, my bride over here to my left, in many ways has been a single parent for our kids, held the hands and hugged the necks of many others when my unit suffered catastrophic losses in combat far from home, led other families to support and welcome us home, only to watch us leave very quickly or soon very shortly thereafter. And she did so while sustaining our family, <clears throat> managing a career, and maintaining the calming demeanor of compassionate leadership in the face of it all. It's way past time for me to be a better partner in this. So, that said, I'm not going very far, because we live in Beaufort, first off. <laughs> By the way, that's exactly two hours and 40 minutes door to door from the State House to my front door. <laughs> But I'll continue to work on behalf of our state and people in other ways, and I sincerely hope to remain in contact with each of you, certainly our partners, certainly the department that I've had the privilege to, be, to lead. I'm excited that Governor McMaster selected my friend, Major General Todd McCaffrey, for nomination as my successor. He is an exceptional leader, a man of passion, intellect, drive, and character, and one who will take this department to ever greater heights in pursuit of serving our service members, their veterans, and family population, the most deserving people in the United States. Thank you for all you do every day, all of you for so many. Thank you for allowing me to serve with each of you in this important work. I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to serve in this formation. Thank you. Thank you, General. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Major General Todd McCaffrey. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here this morning. You honor both myself and my wife, Lisa, here with your presence. First, I'd like to thank Governor McMaster. Oh, yes, thank you. I'd like to thank Governor McMaster for this nomination and his confidence in my ability to lead the Department of Veterans Affairs. I both welcome and appreciate the opportunity to serve fellow South Carolina veterans in this important role. As you all know, and the governor mentioned, there are nearly 400,000 veterans in this state, and they represent America's best. The governor's continued advocacy and the legislature's support for these men and women has reinforced South Carolina's role as the most military, militarily friendly state in the nation. I would also like to take this opportunity to express my admiration and appreciation for the remarkable service and work Secretary Grimsley has done leading this department as its first cabinet level secretary. Will Grimsley's service to our nation in peace and war for over 30 years in uniform and to this state for the past three years leading this agency has made a lasting impact on those who served our nation. I am proud to call him both a colleague and a friend, and I look forward to continuing his legacy in assisting veterans, integrating the services of those who support veterans, advocating for our military installations, service members, and family, family members across the state, and continuing to inform the public about the men and women who selflessly served this country. For over 34 years, I was privileged to serve in uniform with America's most finest sons and daughters. 
Now retired from uniformed service and blessed to call South Carolina home, I am deeply honored to have the opportunity to continue to serve by supporting fellow veterans. I pledge I will do all I can to ensure that our service is valued, their access to benefits assured, and the remarkable potential to our communities and state is recognized. And while veterans often face a range of unique challenges stemming from their service, which we must care for, they also bring a wealth of talent and potential to our state. And I look at endorsing that and assisting that where I can. I'm looking forward to working with state and federal government, county officials, and the private sector to ensure our veteran population can thrive and are proud of their continuing contributions to South Carolina, the community, and the nation. Governor, thank you again for this opportunity, and I look forward to getting to work. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Katrina Sheely, please. That was a long introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you all for being here today. I also want to recognize President Alexander, President of the Senate, and uh, Chairman Celeste Davis, our new chairman of the Medical, Military, and Municipal Affairs in the um, House, and thank them for being here. Um, I want to begin by uh, thanking Secretary Grimsley for the tremendous job he has done over the past uh, couple years, his hard work to set up this new cabinet agency has set a strong foundation for many years to come. His service to those who have served is second to none, and I wish him well in his next adventure, and I hope he doesn't make as many charts for you at home as he has made for us. Uh, I am so sorry. Uh, in the coming weeks, I'm going to be scheduling the confirmation hearing for General McCaffrey. My intent is to do, do this as soon as possible so we can ensure the Department of Veterans Affairs has a confirmed secretary to lead us forward. The Senate Fam Family and Veterans Services Committee will do a third job vetting General McCaffrey, but I have every confidence that his background and record will make this a very easy job. I appreciate his willingness to step forward and take on this tremendous responsibility. Thank you so much, and thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Sheehan. Does anyone have a question? Uh, right now, my, the end of my time is the end of this month. So we need to move quickly. More questions. Not expecting any at this time, but we're sorry to lose Mr. Elsie. She's done a magnificent job. Secretary, tell us how many grandchildren you have. Two boys. So William is uh, my namesake. He's the older. He'll be 10 in May. And Preston, his little brother, will be 8 in July. And baseball season starts. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> now, look, I have, I have some skills, not many, but I have some skills. But I, I also know my limitations. <laughs> That's one of them. And I'll be there as a very ardent supporter. Mm -hmm. More questions? General? Uh, Secretary Griffith, I've talked about this. Really, I think the focus is, is the continuity of effort that he's provided. I think the plan that he's put together and the work he's done establishing the department and the campaign plan they've put together is one I certainly plan on continuing. Are you still currently at USC, is that correct? No, ma'am, I am not. I've been working independently for the last uh, year and a half or so. But I live here in town in Columbia and uh, love living in South Carolina. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.